Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. So if it sounds like there's an echo in this room, this is because I just got set up in a brand new office here. I'm very excited about it because uh, I have a, a wonderful new desk and chair. I have uh, no longer have a microphone stand that I have to fight with. I, I can just set my mic on my desk without making noise because it's such a solid desk. And uh, I'm probably going to replace this loud computer that you can hear in the background and I will end up with some really crystal clear sound. So once again, I apologize. These things take longer than expected to do all these things. We've pretty much furnished an entirely uh, new uh, house, all new furnishing, and basically Jennifer has been working every single day for the last two months, and pretty much so have I. So again, my apologies about being away. I don't intend that to be the case. Uh, every time I think that I'm caught up and I'm going to be able to do more frequent updates, then something else comes up. Today what came up is the trading. Oh my goodness, the trading was insane today. I missed a profit of about $2,000 yesterday on Bitcoin Cash because I got in Bitcoin Cash around 1000 and got out too early and it ran all the way up to, I think it ran up to like 1700 or something. Insane. But I did make uh, a decent amount of money today on the Ethereum breakout. And we're going to talk about that. There's a lot of money coming in, new money coming in, and it's coming out of Korea. I'll show you that. But uh, let's start with this Bitcoin chart here. And again, for all the silver people, I'm sorry, silver's still dead. Nothing going on. <laughs> if there's any news in silver that I see, I will definitely cover it. But it, there's just nothing going on. So... Uh, I'm not going to talk about it. But uh, the Bitcoin chart is really forming something strange here. If we pull in close, you can see it's kind of this really weird flat top. You don't see that sort of thing very often. That, to me, is very, very bullish. And you can see now it's starting to round up. So there's a pretty good chance we're going to be running at new highs. Now, the total market cap here, you can see... We're all the way up at 273 billion. Now, if you remember when I did the Bitcoin Cash video, the flippening, and it, it didn't it didn't come to pass. But what did come to pass is that Bitcoin took a tremendous hit, and it, and then uh, Bitcoin Cash benefited by that. And at one point, I think Bitcoin Cash was almost 3,000, and Bitcoin was uh, down to nearly 6,000. But uh, then that reversed. And it kind of looked like the money was flowing the other way until just recently in this last week, new money has been coming in. And so we're now seeing uh, new money chasing a lot of these cryptos. And I mentioned that I played Ethereum. You can see right now, this is the Dash chart. And again, I'm going to quote these in USDT because... Uh, it's becoming, each one of these is kind of becoming its own market. So it's more accurate, in my opinion, to play the breakouts in, in USDT than to play the breakouts in Bitcoin. What am I talking about? What does this mean? Well, let's go pull up the Dash chart here in Bitcoin. So you can see the same Dash chart. We're not, we're not breaking out into new highs in Bitcoin. In other words, the Dash price in Bitcoin chart is not anywhere near its old high. But the Dash price in dollars is making new highs as we speak. And so I am now currently trading. In fact, the trading that I've been doing for the last week or so has been primarily the major uh, alts. And when I say major alts, I'm talking about these coins here. Now, some of these are weird ones like Stellar that I don't know why it's really here. Or Rep. Nobody trades that. If you look at the volume, there's hardly any volume. But it, there's a decent amount. But when I mean the uh, major alts, I'm talking about Ethereum, Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum Classic, Zcash, and Litecoin, and Dash, and Monero. 
uh, Ripple's be kind of dead, but we'll keep an eye on Ripple. But uh, looking at the Dash chart, you can see very, very textbook pattern. You can see we've got a breakout from a pennant, forming up another pennant, another breakout. And so money is flowing in and it's coming in apparently from South Korea. So if we look at the exchanges here, you can see that the top exchange is BitThumb. And although they only have 10 markets, you can see here's the 10 markets they have. Uh, they're still number one at $1.8 billion. Bitfinex comes in at $1.2 billion. Bittrex is trading almost a billion dollars. Can you believe that? Poloniex is less than half. So my prediction that Bittrex would overtake Poloniex has come true. Poloniex didn't go under, and I'm very glad about that. I am back and trading on Poloniex, but cautiously. I, I just don't like Bittrex's interface. You can see that Bittrex has 270 cryptos listed, while Poloniex is down to 92. But for a number of reasons, if I can, I like to trade the major alts. And the, the main reason amongst those reasons is the liquidity of the bid and ask spread. Because when you're talking about a, a very small amount of Bitcoins traded per day on a certain coin, then the bid ask is really wide. And you can take a 5 or 10% loss just getting in and getting out. So that's, uh, that's not fun to play. But so if we have action in the major alts, then that is great trading. So back to the exchanges here. So if we go to BitThumb, you can see here these uh, coins are all coded in the Korean won. So this is a Korean exchange and it's number one. And where's the money coming in? It's coming into Bitcoin Cash. It's coming into Ethereum. It's coming into Bitcoin. It's coming into Ethereum Classic. It's coming into the major alts and it's coming in from South Korea. I think that probably $50 billion of this $273 billion cap the market cap, which 50 billion is, is new in the last couple of weeks, has come in from South Korea. So that's exciting. But you can see the effect it's having. Dash clearly is breaking out. Uh, like I said, Ethereum, I had, I had bought Ethereum around 400 because uh, that was a breakout for it. Uh, let me see if I can pull it up on the chart here. So yeah, when Ethereum got above this 400 mark right here, I bought some uh, and it just kind of stalled. But this morning when I saw it take out 428, let me see if I can find that on the chart here, uh, was, it was this breakout right here. When I saw this volume come in, that was when I piled in and went long. So I sold half my position around 470, and I, I've got I've still got some Ethereum, but I, I caught a good move on that Ethereum. Like I, I've said in the past, anytime you're buying something that's going into new all-time highs, and again, this is new all-time highs in quoted in dollars. This is not new all-time highs quoted in Bitcoin. So just for informational purposes, let's go over to the Ethereum chart quoted in Bitcoin. And you can see uh, way, way off from its all-time highs. You can see at one point, Ethereum was about a fifth of a Bitcoin. And it's all the way down to a 20th of a Bitcoin. But it is breaking out above that uh, moving average right there. So I am trading off of the USDT now. And... Another reason why I like that is because when I liquidate a position, I am liquidating it for cash. And that doesn't that makes it so I'm not vulnerable to Bitcoin's price. Now if Bitcoin's going up and I liquidate, then obviously I'm getting a double win. But I don't like to actually play two things at once. I like to just you know, do the one trade that I'm doing. I, I don't really want to be betting on Bitcoin while I'm betting on something else. And that's what you're kind of forced to do when you're trading these Bitcoin quoted alts. So as more major alts come in and start to be recognized on their own, and this is really important because I've seen in the news, for example, someone said Ethereum hit a new high at $462. 
Well, that's really important because then people are thinking in terms of the price of that particular coin. So it starts to begin to stand on its own. And you can see here, there's quite a few. Bitcoin is right now at 83.19, 83.20. Bitcoin Cash is at 15.57. Combine those together, that gives you about a $9,000 Bitcoin. So that's getting really close to that 10,000 price. Uh, Dash comes in uh, third here with a price of 599 and Ethereum, like I said, is, is making new highs at 462. Zcash is next, and then there's Monero. Litecoin, I've been watching it very carefully. It is also breaking into new highs. Uh, I don't believe these are all time highs for Litecoin though. You can see that Litecoin actually reached, uh, if I can see, I can get the high on this. 82 there, 90 something. I'll have to pull it out here. It's, it's not going to cooperate. So I don't think I can get that exact number, but it's, it's in the 90s. So Litecoin is also forming a pennant trying to get a new nominal high, nominal being quoted in dollars. So what's going on? Well, I just think that the Koreans are starting to wake up to cryptocurrencies and the people that are already in them really aren't selling. So we're pushing that $300 billion. We've got a little over a month left for my $1 trillion prediction. We could get halfway there, definitely. So let's look at a few other things. I'll finish out by doing what I, I'll give you my picks that I'm currently playing. Not to say that I'm making recommendations, but just I'll let you know what I'm currently trading. But let's look at a few other things here. Let's start with the futures chart. Now this is, uh, we're looking at a change in the yield curve now. You can see as you go in, on FinViz and look at the bonds here, we, we can start with the 30 year note and then go down to the 10, the five year note. So this is the 30 year, this is the 10 year, that's the five year, and that's the two year. So, what you can see is that there's a downslope here in the short term. And, and as the shorter the term gets, the sharper it gets. You can see on the 30 year, it's actually rising back from that December uh, date. The price is rising, which means interest rates have been falling since December of 2016 on the 30 year bond. But short term interest rates have been rising since that date. So that's altering the, f the shape of the yield curve. Now it's not anything that's extreme right now, but it is going to have an impact. And as I've talked about before, the big impact that it's going to have is on the national debt because the national debt has an interest rate and that amount of money that's paid as interest on the national debt comes out of the current tax year's budget. That's money that can't be spent on discretionary spending, which, by the way, is becoming a smaller and smaller piece of the pie every single day. Uh, I think entitlements are over two, maybe even over two and a half trillion, and the budget's only three something. So uh, it, it's getting ridiculous. But here's the national debt, uh, debt to the penny. And you can see I always do the year and then, and then, uh, a year ago and, and then the current year. And you can see a year ago it was 19, it was almost 20 trillion, 19,897, uh, about 19,9, and we're currently at 25,33. So that is a $630 billion deficit. Now, admittedly, it's not a trillion dollar deficit, but those years, of, sorry, that was my new desk and mic. I'm gonna have to get used to that. Um, those were years when they blew out the budget intentionally. That was 2009 or around there when they gave Obama free reign to just blow out the budget. But although we haven't risen in percentage terms, if we were rivaling percentage terms, we'd be running like a $1.5 trillion deficit. But still, 
digging a $600 billion hole every single year is a really bad thing. Uh, so the Congress is currently debating you know, what they're going to do about it, but they never do anything. Um, they never cut. The only thing they could do is cut, and the things that they could cut, they can't cut anymore because it's all discretionary. It's non-discretionary. So they're, they, they painted themselves into a corner. And this, of course, is the event that we've been waiting for, whether it's going to be a hyperinflationary collapse or whether it's going to be a deflationary bust. We just don't know. We don't know what direction they're going to take it. Uh, there's no question that it's gone on longer than anybody could have ever predicted it would go on. And it's gone on, uh, I think... Uh, one of the great quotes is markets can stay irrational longer than you can stay solvent. Uh, another one would be the quote uh, from Zero Hedge, which is the uh, saying of that site. On a long enough timeline, the survival rate for everyone drops to zero. That's kind of the way that silver stackers have felt lately. You know, um, there probably have been a number of silver stackers who have died waiting for the price of silver to go up. Well, I've said before, it's not going to go. We're not going to see a significant move without fiscal, financial, monetary catastrophe. And that's what they've been able to put off for longer than anybody could have predicted. Now, I do believe that Bitcoin is an indicator of what's coming because Bitcoin is going what some would call a hyperinflationary blowout. Uh, it's definitely parabolic. There's no question that the MACD is higher than it's ever been. Um, I'm back in and playing because it's still rising, but at some point there's going to be an unbelievable crash. But the crash might be from 20,000 down to 10 or 20,000 down to 5. We just don't know when it's going to happen. But uh, as I said, currently we have a lot of money flowing in from South Korea. And it seems to be going into some of these major alts. The uh, major ones being Bitcoin Cash, Dash, and Ethereum. So as far as trading recommendations, what I'm doing on the major alts right now, I told you that I was carrying Ethereum and I sold some, some of the Ethereum that I picked up around 400 and then earlier today around 428, sold a, a decent amount of that position and then I've, I've been coming back in here now and adding a little bit. Uh, there's a very, very good chance that Ethereum is going to continue up. If you look at it, if you look at the chart, it seems to be forming a parabola. Uh, if you think about the just the nominal price of 466, considering that there's a lot of people who who believe that Ethereum is, if not the second best cryptocurrency, then even the best cryptocurrency out there, even better than Bitcoin that Ethereum is only in the $400 while Bitcoin Cash is almost $1,580. Uh, that indicates to me a very bullish situation for Ethereum. Do I believe in Ethereum? No, I think it has vulnerabilities. I would never hold Ethereum for the long term, but I would definitely trade it. And I think that based on those factors, Ethereum is undervalued and it could probably run definitely to 500 really quick here and it could it could run to six or seven before it corrects. So that's one I'm going to be keeping an eye on. The way that I play these markets is I add on a breakout. And as long as the market is healthy and continues up, then I add a small amount to that position and I build the position until either I have a profit that's so tempting that I have to sell or there's a massive volume spike where the thing is moving straight up and uh, I just have to take the profit. That's usually how I get out. Now, I've, like I said, I've left a lot of money on the table. I definitely left money on the table with Bitcoin Cash. I had been accumulating once it had done this dip here. 
and it was absolutely dead. And then it did this takeoff. And on this spike, I sold, and that was a big mistake. I left two to three hundred dollars per coin on the table. Uh, it ran much further than I thought it would. So I'm still working on that aspect of trading. I think it was Jesse Livermore who said it was not my thinking that made me my money. It wasn't being right. It was sitting tight. And sitting tight when you're right is a hard thing to do, especially if you've seen a lot of coins turn around and go against you and have all your profits bleed away. It's very tempting to take your profits. So one of the things that I do is I'll sell half the position on a, a very profitable spike and wait and then maybe add some, some more back in. Another thing that I will do that has been working very well for me is I will go up above the market and I will stagger in a bunch of cells. So for example, with Ethereum this morning, uh, once I had established my position, I think it was 428 that I was all in, what I did was I went to the sell orders here and I went in and I just typed in uh, round figures. Like I typed in uh, 450 and sell at 452 Ethereum. And then I went up, I went at 475, sell two. And I went at 500, sell two. And I just went all the way up to six or something. I canceled the higher ones now, but I got. Uh, I got triggered on my, I got triggered on two, I believe. I, I think I might have had one lower than 450. I actually couldn't watch the market because I would have been tempted to sell. So I just put those sell stops in and went to the gym. But uh, that that is a, a way to trade these as well. You can just stagger your cells up above the market and then leave maybe a quarter or a third of the position without a sell. And then you might want to ride that or keep that. So those are the coins I'm playing now. As far as the alts, I am playing some of these alts right now. I have a little bit of a tiny position now in Florin coin because it's it's kind of ticking up now. Uh, I have a tiny position in Burst right now. And I have a tiny position in Digibyte right now. Uh, and again, if they act right, if they keep going up, then I'll slowly add a little bit to them. One thing, one caveat when you're trading these secondary alts, I'll call them, uh, you want to you want to look at the volume here because you can't just look at the percentage gains. They could be thinly traded. So for example, you can see that Einsteinium is up 54, but it's only got 323 bitcoins volume. Uh, but that's, I mean, that's halfway decent. Steam dollars is up 40% and it's got 76 Bitcoin volume, but let's look at Counterparty here. Okay, Counterparty is up 17%, but the volume on it is only 16 Bitcoins. So a volume of 16 Bitcoins has managed to push the price of this thing up 17%. That is usually a situation where you can get in, but you can't get out so easily. Uh, so you can see here you have some buy orders at 221, sell orders at 221, that looks pretty good. But to actually get some volume here, like to get one Bitcoin worth of volume in this, you have to go all the way to 0 0.0021. And to get one Bitcoin volume on the sell side, you have to go all the way up to 0 .0, uh, basically 0 0.0023. So from 0023 to 0021, that's a 10% spread. So you're risking 10% trying uh, to buy and sell this. So you have to keep an eye on these volume figures. The first thing I do is when I get up in the morning is I look for the percentage change to see what's active. It might be a coin that may be near a breakout. I might want to play it. But then as soon as I isolate one, I will pull up the volume and I'll list them according to volume next, and then I'll look down through the list. If it doesn't have significant volume, then it's just too dangerous to play, unless you're looking at a long-term accumulation. So I'm gonna wrap this up. There's new money coming in. It's coming in from South Korea. It's pushing up many of the major alts and Bitcoin as well. 
Uh, I think this trend is going to continue for some time and uh, there could be a lot new money, a lot of new money coming in. And we'll talk to you next time.